Hi, boys and girls. This book is called The Star Spangled Banner, Song and Flag of Independence. And this is part of the primary source readers' uh, books that we've been reading for social studies in first grade. And let's take a look at The Star Spangled Banner. The Star Spangled Banner, Song and Flag of Independence. Stephanie Makeka. M-A-E-D. This is a reader's theater book. And this is uh, going to be a play. And there are different characters in the play. We have Mary, Carolyn, and Grandmother. And then we have uh, Narrator 1 and Narrator 2. And right here it talks about the setting. That this Reader's Theater takes place during the War of 1812. This story is based on actual events. So it is um, based on things that really happened in real life. Narrator 1. Almost every American knows the story of our national anthem. The Star Spangled Banner. But not many know the story of the woman who made the flag that inspired the song. This is her story. Narrator 2. The year was 1812. Colonel Armistead had just arrived to take charge of Fort McHenry. Narrator 1. At that time, France and Great Britain controlled the oceans. These big countries told everyone else what to do. Narrator 2. Britain started stealing American ships and taking sailors prisoners. People were very upset by this. America declared war on Britain in 1812. Narrator 1. For two years, England was busy fighting with France. When the two countries stopped fighting, people knew that the British would soon turn their attention to America. Everyone feared that the battles would be terrible. Narrator 2. Colonel Armistead had to prepare Fort McHenry for battle. He wanted a very large flag to fly over the fort so the British would be able to see it from a distance. Narrator 1. The colonel had no idea that his request for a large flag would set into motion the events that led to the writing of our national anthem. Okay, we're in Act 2. Carolyn. Johnny, what do you have in your hand? Johnny said. It's a letter for your mother from Colonel Armistead. Carolyn. What does he want with you? Mary. He wants us to make a flag for Fort McHenry. Grandmother. What an honor. The townspeople must be talking about your flag making skills. Johnny. Yes, I was told that you're a very good seamstress and this is why you've been given the important job. Carolyn, and you can work fast too. Grandmother, I've taught you well. You come from a long line of flag makers. Your brother is a good flag maker too. I'm so proud of you. Carolyn, what else does the letter say? Mary, he wants me to make a huge flag, 30 feet high by 42 feet long. And you can see right here is a little illustration of them reading the letter. Grandmother, that is a grand flag. I don't think I've ever seen a flag so big. I can help. I'm becoming a good seamstress and our servants will help too. Mary, he's asked us to make a storm flag too. Johnny, what's a storm flag? Carolyn, it's a smaller flag for flying in the rain. Mary, a storm flag cannot be made of wool or it would shrink from the rain. Grandmother, how much time does the Colonel give us to complete the order? Mary, we have only six weeks. Grandmother, six weeks is not a lot of time, but we've sewn flags in that amount of time before. Carolyn, it will be an honor to have our flags flying over Fort McHenry. 
Act Three. I found a large space to make the flag. The master at Claggett's Brewery said you could work in his warehouse. Mary. He agreed to let us use the malt house. Johnny. Yes. He said it was patriotic duty to allow us, you, to the space to build such an important flag. Grandmother. We better get started. First, you'll need to get all of the supplies. Johnny. Please give me a list of what you need. I'll deliver them to you right away. Act four, Carolyn. I'm almost finished sewing together all of the pieces for the stars. It has taken me so much longer than I expected. Grandmother, that's because each of the stars must be two feet wide. Mary, <laughs> it would have been easier if I could have used single pieces of fabric. Johnny, even I know that a long piece of cotton is very expensive. Grandmother, it would have been easier to do each stripe in one piece too, but the stripes are so large, it would have been impossible. Johnny, look at me. I am as tall as two stripes put together. Carolyn, and there are 15 stripes. Grandmother, there must be thousands of stitches here. Narrator one says, experts estimate that there were 350,000 hand-sewn stitches in the flag that Mary made for Fort McHenry. Grandmother, and see how the same stars are seen from both sides? You have fabric and made the flag lighter. Oh, you saved fabric and made the flag lighter. I just measured the flag. It's 1,260 square feet. Carolyn, isn't this going to be too heavy to fly? Grandmother, wool is a light fabric. That will help make the flag light enough to fly in the wind. Mary, Johnny, will you help me weigh it? Then I'll send it to the fort. Johnny, are you going to get paid a lot of money for this flag? Mary, I'm really lucky, Johnny. My mother taught me an important trade that has allowed me to support my family. Carolyn, and the storm flag is separate. We'll get paid for that too? Johnny, I mean, I've been meaning to ask, why is the American flag red, white, and blue? Grandmother, no one knows for sure. Maybe the red is for bravery. Carolyn, the white might be for innocence. And Mary, and the blue could stand for justice. Act five, narrator one. In 1812, Francis Scott Key was working as a lawyer, but he wanted to join the fight for freedom. Narrator two, Key stopped being a lawyer and joined the war. He helped with cannons and gathered supplies. Narrator one, in September of 1814, British soldiers took an American doctor prisoner. Francis Scott Key took a small boat to meet the British. He pleaded for them to release the doctor. Narrator two. Luckily, the British soldiers set the doctor free, but they made the men stay on their ship overnight. The attack on Fort McHenry was about to begin. <clears throat> Narrator one. It was raining that day, so the storm flag was raised over Fort McHenry. British soldiers pounded the fort with 2,000 cannonballs. The sky lit up with fire and the ground shook for miles around. Bombs burst in the air. Rockets exploded and dropped into the ocean. The water sprayed onto the boats in the harbor. It was a tough battle, but the Americans knew they could win. They refused to surrender to the British. All night, the bombs whistled and then exploded in the air. Francis Scott Key watched the attack all night long. Each time a rocket lit up the sky, Key checked to see if the American flag was still flying over Fort McHenry, and it was. Act six. 
all the quiet on the morning. All was quiet on the morning of September 14th, 1814. The fighting had ended and the battle was over. The colonel ordered his men to hoist a huge flag that Mary Pickersgill had made for Fort McHenry. Now everyone would know that America had defeated the British. Hoist the flag! With the early morning light key, with the early morning light, he looked to see if the flag was still flying above the fort. At first, all he saw was a lot of smoke. When the smoke finally cleared, he saw the huge flag waving in the wind. It was Mary Pickergill's flag with its broad stripes and bright stars. He was so inspired by what he saw, he took out a letter from his pocket and began to write a poem. He called it the defense of Fort McHenry, Act 7. Francis Scott Key's poem was set to music and became a popular song. It later became the song we now know as the Star Spangled Banner. In 1916, President Woodrow Wilson declared it the official song of the United States of America. And this is a poem called Stitching Together. We have a job to do. We're honored to be asked. We'll stitch and stitch and stitch and make a flag to last with stripes of red and white and stars against the blue. A flag of strength and might. A flag for me and you. We'll do the job together. We'll work to get it done. A star spangled banner to wave for everyone. And these are the songs that go with the Star Spangled Banners. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. And this is the glossary with vocabulary words, and it says ablaze is on fire, radiant with light or bright color. Commission, an order granted the power to perform various acts or duties. Malt house, a business where grain and especially barley are steeped in water and used chiefly in brewing and distilling. National anthem, a song that states the patriotic feelings of a country. Patriotic, feeling love for one's own country. Perilous, full of danger involving injury, loss, or destruction. Prevail, to win against opposition and to be successful. Ramparts, a broad bank or wall raised as a protective barrier. Seamstress, a woman who sews especially for a living. And this was our story about the Star Spangled Banner. And I know you know that song, and I know you've heard it at a lot of sporting events and sports games, um, the Star Spangled Banner. But I encourage you to listen to the Star Spangled Banner.